a food manufacturer distribution, um, distributive food. Um, we work with some of the bigger players in the market. We're based centrally in Utah, uh, but we have operations in uh, Arizona, Ohio, California, uh, and Arizona. Um, my direct role is as Vice President Chief Information Officer uh, for the company. I've been with the company for about 15 years um, and helped develop their IT infrastructure uh, to the point that it is today. I think we've had a long-standing relationship with Impulse. Uh, it's been a very um, personal relationship. You know, they've dealt with us um, as if we were one of their top-tier customers, even from the very beginning. Uh, they've been willing to go the extra mile on every mm -hmm. project that we've done, and really they've become a extension to our own company. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, that's, I mean, Impulse is that they are definitely, they've become another arm of our company, and we treat them as such. They've become less of a vendor and less of a, a consultant to our services as really being a part of our company. And uh, I think from every executive of our company, they understand that. They understand that you understand our company, you understand what our priorities are, and you're able to um, resolve situations quickly and help us to develop uh, and implement new technologies quickly because of that, which other companies, other vendors we deal with aren't capable of because they don't understand our business um, as well as you do. Um, I remember our CFO saying that to me, you know, that Impulse always knew, you know, the problem before we ever picked up the phone to make the call. Yeah, that's cool. You know, and he still says that to this day. That's what's <laughs> funny. He still says that same quote. And when we talk to our board of directors, that's something that's always brought up. If they come to us and say, well, maybe, you know, maybe you should go with a lower priced option, you know, those sorts of comments, or maybe a bigger player upstream. Um, I usually don't even have to defend it. Hmm. You know, it's defended by our chief financial officer. <laughs> you know, we feel that you're a part of our business and uh, you help us to be successful. So, um, so the, you know, we were looking at it as we were expanding and growing. It was either go down the traditional PBX route and deploy more of those. Um, we had a very mixed uh, network, you know, concerning telecom. So I mean, we had a different PBX at every single location. So there was really no unified approach to dealing with it. Um, when we looked at the cost, you know, uh, aspect of it, it was negligible, you know, either way, um, except in the fact that the feature sets were much more advanced. Um, the dynamicness of hosted solutions is a lot different. Um, and that you guys, you know, specialize mm -hmm. in that particular market. So we didn't have to hire a host of people to run, you know, a new system for us, nor did we have to invest in, you know, an extreme amount of hardware infrastructure to deploy traditional PBX, you know, out. Um, so there's value, I think, in the long-term thinking of the project, you know. I think um, you're always driven, right, with the dollar and cents amount at the very beginning. Uh, but I think what a lot of people fail to realize is, is it's really the whole picture. It's the maintenance, it's the ongoing support, it's the upgrades, it's everything that goes along with that package, you know, adding more feature sets. Um, and then the traditional PBX, well, that was very expensive. And, it, and so when we looked at it from that, you know, point of view, um, hosted solution, you know, was a lot better. It just, it made sense to go that route.